the perfect way to answer video interview questions. In this video, I'm going to tell you about what is the perfect way to answer these questions, and then I'm going to teach you exactly how to do it, exactly what it says on the tin. So let me just introduce myself. My name is Owen. I'm a degree apprentice, and I help people get degree apprenticeships in the engineering, technology, and finance industries. Here are some of the people I helped last year get into companies like JLR, HSBC, Deutsche Bank, Amazon, KPMG, just to name a few. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get into this video and let's just start off so so that we're all on the same page. What exactly is a video interview? Okay, so a video interview is sort of an intermediate stage of the application process that you're likely going to have to do on a lot of your degree apprenticeships. So you're going to do your initial application. That means maybe sending off a CV, doing a cover letter, maybe filling in an application form. Then usually you're going to hear back about some sort of intermediate stages. This can be psychometric tests. This can be game-based assessments. Another one they do is video interviews. Okay, so it's sort of a, a lot of the time it's the second or third stage of the application process. So a video interview is different to a normal interview. Okay, with a video interview, what's going to happen is you're sort of going to log onto like a software, log onto like a program on your laptop. It's all done virtually, and basically it's just going to display stuff to you at the screen, and you have to answer those questions. Okay, so it's going to put put a question on the screen, and you're going to get this preparation time. You have one minute to prepare. A timer is going to automatically count down. And then once that timer is counted down with that preparation time, that's when your answer is going to start. And it's going to say two minutes to answer or three minutes to answer. It varies between each company, but you'll be given the time to answer and you just have to speak into the camera. So this is different from a normal interview because no people are involved. The answers are just automatically recorded. As I said, you just go into the software, go into this program. It'll automatically just do this countdown. It'll automatically give you the questions and it'll just record your webcam during this answer now section. So if it's a three minute answer, when the three minute starts, it'll just start recording you. The assessors are going to basically go through and review everyone's answers at a later date. Okay, and the good thing about a video interview is you're actually allowed some preparation time. So in a normal interview, when when you were like real people, if they ask you a question, it's like you basically have to be responding within like ten seconds, basically. Whereas this one, they, they quite commonly give you preparation time. Can be thirty seconds, can be a minute. Some companies even can be like two minutes to prepare for the question, so you can sort of plan what you're going to say, plan out your answer. And on top of this, sometimes as well, you're actually allowed to re-record your answer, which can be helpful if you, for example, messed it up the first time. Okay, so now that we're on the same page, what what is a video interview? This is the key thing, really for video interviews and it's the main question and constraint I see with people when they're thinking about video interviews how much is enough to talk about okay because there's a perfect way of doing this okay you can get this wrong but there's a perfect way of doing this so let's just say you're given three minutes to answer okay let's just use three minutes as an example for the rest of this video so if you're given three minutes to answer how much should you talk about to have a sort of perfect answer okay well there's two ways we can look at this, okay? Should you go longer than three minutes if you've been given three minutes to answer? Well, the answer is no, because you actually can't, because with this video interview software, the recording just automatically stops and you're going to be cut off mid-sentence. So you don't want to be going on longer than three minutes because then just halfway through it'll stop and they'll just be like, what is this? Okay, so you can't go longer than three minutes. Fine. Should you go shorter than three minutes? Okay. Well, the answer is ideally not, okay? And I want you to think about this example. I want you to imagine the question is, what are your strengths? Okay, and we have two candidates. We have... Bob and Barry. I, I, I don't know why those are the first two names to come in my head, but we, we got Bob and we got Barry, okay? Bob gets asked the question, what are your strengths, okay? And he lists a couple of his strengths, whatever, whatever, talks for one minute and 15 seconds. Bob, okay, nice one. Then Barry comes to his video interview, does the question, he gets asked, what are your strengths? He talks for two minutes and 59 seconds, okay? Well, what does that tell you straight away? Because Bob here, when asked about his strengths, what are you good at? right how would you contribute to the company why would you be a good employee that's basically the question being asked here he only spoke for one minute 15 barry spoke for two minute 59 barry is basically presenting himself as a way better candidate because effectively he's got two minutes 59 worth of answer if that makes sense worth of strength he's got two minutes 59 worth of strengths now obviously he could have been for that two minute 59 he could have been chatting a load of rubbish and it's just it's just not it's like gibberish right but if we just control the quality of the answer so let's just say what they said was basically the same um in terms of like the quality of it but one of them only talked for one minute 15 one of them only talked for two minute 59 you're going to think straight away that that two minute 59 person has more strengths because they were able to talk about it for longer they couldn't just like whereas this person named one strength and then got stuck and they finished after like 20 seconds you know what i mean so that's why when you're going shorter than three minutes Especially on questions like this, it, it, it doesn't look good. If it, it can be a lot of these questions, what do you know about this company? It's like, this person has three minutes of full research, this person has one minute of research. It's like, who's researched the company better? This guy, he's more dedicated, he's more hardworking, he wants the job more, he's more of an ideal employee. Okay? Tell me about a time when you work as a team. This guy here has a full, in-depth, 
detailed, thought out answer of the situation, the task, the action, the result. This guy's like, oh yeah, so I worked as a team when I was playing football in year six. And that's it. And then you're just, you're telling nothing to the recruiter about your teamwork skills, your collaboration skills, and your previous experience. Okay, so you ideally don't want to be going then shorter than three minutes. Okay, because it's just, you're basically just getting beaten by anyone who speaks longer than you. Obviously, if they're actually saying something useful. Okay, obviously, I would rather you give like a two minute answer that's good than a three minute answer where you're just not even speaking English, right? Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to sh- assume that you're doing the answer right. You ideally want to be as close to that sort of, well, you, I mean, you don't want to go shorter than three minutes. So, okay, so now that you've done that, you can probably see where this is going to go for. If you can't go longer than three minutes, you can't go shorter than three minutes, how long should you talk for? Well, it's, it's basically as close to the full time as possible. So just under. So when I was doing video interviews, I'd basically be aiming to finish in like the five seconds left, four seconds left, three seconds left, two seconds left. It's like you sort of want to do your closing sentence about now. And then it's like two seconds, you just sort of smile at the camera, right? Do something like that for the last two seconds. Two seconds is done, the camera will stop recording. Okay, and that's basically, that's the perfect way you want to do these. It's timed perfectly. You're saying as much as you can, which means you're getting out as much value. You're giving out as much experience and skills. You're showing off as much experience and skills to the assessors as you possibly can, but you're not going over. So you're maintaining that professionalism. Okay, as opposed to just getting like cut off like that. (laughs) Okay. So that's, that's the strategy for doing a perfect video answer. You've got to get it on time completely, okay? So now that you've learned how, now that you've learned what the strategy is, how do you do it perfectly? I'm going to cover that in the rest of this video. So there's basically two things, because th- there's two ways to look at this. If you, if you need to get a perfectly timed answer where you're finishing at like 2.59, 2.58, right? And by the way, just, just to clarify again, I'm using three minutes as an example here for the rest of this video. The same thing applies with whatever time limit it be. So different companies use different time limits. Some companies might do a one minute time limit. Some companies might do a two minute. Some companies might do a four minute. Whatever it is, it's just the same, the same thing applies. You don't want to be short too much. Like you don't want to be too sh- too much shorter than it. But you don't want to be going over it at all. Okay, but let's let's just continue using three minutes as an example. So there's two ways to look at it. If you're trying to get to three minutes, either you take too long to answer, or you're not long enough. Which one do you fix? Okay, so if you're the kind of person who usually take too long answering, like you're sort of rambling on and you just sort of maybe you you like lose sight of the original question, you're just going on tangents and all this sort of thing, then tactic number one is going to be for you. And then if you usually don't answer long enough, like it's a three minute question and now of like uh, but by like one minute thirty, you run out of ideas. Tactics two two is going to be for you. So we're going to go through those in a second. I would recommend watching both of them because it's going to be useful insights for you. So first, we'll go to tactic one. Okay, this one's pretty easy. So if you're usually taking too long to answering questions okay this is what you need to do in the video interview when you get asked the question you have the preparation time you need to think about your key points okay so what are the key points you want to cover if the question is what are your strengths okay you're probably going to think of three or four key strengths okay and you'll use your research so you'll think about the values of that company what are the skills they had, they were looking for and you probably you want to say those are your strengths okay so say you're working for a, a company that really cares about collaboration and teamwork you're going to say that one of your strengths is teamwork like you're not going to say one of your strengths is oh i love working independently i hate talking to people right you're obviously going to use that research to tailor it to the company so you think about your couple of key strengths communication collaboration leadership attention to detail right and then simple as this you just split them evenly between the time you have okay so i'll, I'll just keep this easy for the maths three minute question let's say you have three key points for what are your strengths you want to say communication collaboration leadership okay simple as that one minute for each one and then you just need to take a note of the time because the time is going to be ticking down on your screen. And it just means when you're approaching one minute, you need to make sure you move on to the next one. Okay, you don't want to be still on the first one, like collaboration, your first key point, And it's like one minute 45 and it's like two minutes, right? Because then you, you're, you're not going to have time to get those two ones or you're going to have to rush them and get them in really quickly. So it's actually just do it evenly between each one. Okay. And this is a vital skill for other parts of the application process too. Like this simple thing, which I mean... It seems simple to me now because I've done so much practice there. It can be quite difficult when you're starting, like trying to time things perfectly. But with with practice, it will come. This is a super vital skill for other parts of the application process. I'll give you an example. In the assessment center, which is usually one of the final stages of the application process, a lot of companies do a presentation. Now, with this presentation, again, they give you a time limit. So it might be an eight-minute presentation, a five-minute presentation, a 10-minute presentation. At 90% of companies, that time limit is fixed, exactly like the video interview here. The assessor is actually going to interrupt you 
when you get to that eight minute or ten minute or five minute timer and say that's your time up so you can't go over at all exactly the same as a video interview so when you're doing that presentation the way i would do it is i'd basically make a like, sort of mental mental note of where i needed to be for each of those slides so i knew that uh, oh when i'm on slide four i need to be three minute thirty in when i'm in like slide six i need to be five minutes in oh i'm slide seven and i still have three minutes left okay i need to slow down a bit Okay, or, oh, five minutes have been passed and I'm only on slide three. Okay, I need to hurry up with the rest of the slides. Does that make sense? I'm sort of dynamically um, adjusting to how long it's taking so that I can meet the deadline perfectly. And that meant with my presentations, I was able to hit the deadline perfectly. If it's an eight-minute presentation, every time I'd be getting 7.59. That's my thing. Okay, so that's a bit of a tangent because it's slightly different, but it's the same skill for this one. It's about keeping a note of the time when you're doing this video interview so that you don't basically go on for too long. If you've only got one minute for each key point, you talk about it for one minute, then you have to have the discipline. Even if you've got more things to say, you have to have that discipline to move on because you know you need time for the other parts. Okay, it's a bit like an exam where a lot of people like don't finish the exam because they like see the first couple of questions they spend absolute ages on the first question and then like the long essay question at the end they don't have time for like this this was a common thing in geography people would just spend too long on the first couple of questions the final question at the end no one would have time for it was when i was doing my geography exams back in like the gcse days i'd make sure those first questions even though i had loads of stuff in my head to write i'd only write like short amounts of bit make sure i got onto that big question because that's where you get all the big marks and then if i had time at the end i'd come back and that was how, how i was able to basically finish my geography papers and that sort of thing Okay, so that's your tactic for if you usually take too long for answering. Now, if you usually don't answer for long enough, so it's a three-minute question, like at one minute 30, you run out of things to say. Well, first of all, the main thing is more preparation beforehand. Okay, it's as simple as that. Like, this is probably not the answer you want to hear because it's a bit more work, but it's like, at the end of the day, these degree apprenticeships are competitive. You've got to put the work in. So it's more preparation beforehand. This means researching the companies, okay, researching about the apprenticeship and practicing these common questions, okay? When it is a question like, what do you know about this company? You should honestly be able to talk for like five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, ten minutes about it. That's how much research you've done. It shouldn't be a situation where after 45 seconds you don't know anything else about the company because you should have been on their websites, maybe watched some webinars. If you've got any work experience in the industry, that sort of thing, you'll have got a lot of research about the industry, how the companies operate and that sort of thing. So the first thing is more preparation beforehand and practicing those sort of common questions which come up in these video interviews. And now... The second half of this is pretty similar as well. It's pretty similar to that previous tactic. And it's, again, think about your key points, split them evenly between the time you have, and then you need to just make sure you reach them. So in the past one, it was like one minute for each of your key points. So again, this is an example. Three minutes in total. We have three key points, one minute for each one. We need to make sure, instead of doing like well, two minutes on the first one, we cut it down to one minute. So that was a previous tactic. This one is the other way around. This one, you probably want to talk about each key point for 20 seconds because you, you can't think of like things to say. But I need you to bump it up to one minute. Okay, and that's basically what you just need to track. Okay, if you're sort of getting to the end of one of your key points, you know you should be spending 60 seconds on it, but only 30 seconds have passed. What that means is you need to have the discipline to just keep going. Okay, to keep adding extra facts, examples, statistics until you reach the target time. So, for example, say again, the question is, what are your strengths? Uh, the first one you talk about is collaboration. And you say, oh, one of my strengths is collaboration. Um, I research your company. I know that you have this sort of like principle where you care about teamwork and all this sort of thing. An example where I use collaboration was DFV, where I did da 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 And you give the example of DFV. Say you then get to, I don't know, 40 seconds and, and your DFV one's done and that's you done. You need to have the discipline to continue for that next 20 seconds to reach that minute. And what that means is, it's, for example, giving another example. So you've given your DOV example. That's where sort of on the spot you'd have to be like, oh, yeah. And then just another example of where I've used collaboration was when we had this physics project in year 12. And this is where I was asking people for their opinions. I wanted to include them and all this sort of thing. OK, so this is this is a skill which it is a bit difficult to do at the start. OK, it's, it's a bit complicated because you need to be ready to adapt and add in those extra facts as example statistics. So it, it, it relies on this research and practice. That's number one. But then number two, you sort of need to develop the skills um, of adding sort of these extra facts and having that discipline to stay up to that time. But it's really important because if you're giving short answers, if you're giving answers that last one minute 30 and everyone else is giving three minute answers, they're going to be doing better than you, man. I'll just be honest. Okay, and this is where doing mock interviews, doing practice questions, that sort of thing is really useful for this. Okay, so there we go. There we've covered basically everything you need to know about how to deliver your video interviews in like the perfect manner, making sure you reach the perfect time. Okay, so I hope this video has given you value and has taught you about video interviews. If you are interested and you want to learn a bit more and you sort of want to 
get a bit more support with your degree apprenticeship applications, I'll just tell you about one more thing. So I have just released my coaching program. I'm basically helping people get into degree apprenticeships. I'll show you a few things which are in this coaching program now. First of all, I've done a full course on video interviews. It's going to cover a lot of, lot of things in a lot more detail than I did in this video, including exactly what to do in your preparation time, the best strategy for answering questions, whether you should re-record or not, going through some common video interview questions, and also a checklist which will help you with success in the video interview. Now that's going to help you learn the theory in detail of exactly what you need to do to do well in those video interviews. But not only that, including the program is also a mock video interview, which I've handcrafted based on, based on a real video interview that occurred during 2024. You can be in the program, do this mock video interview, send me your answers, and I'll basically give you an in-depth analysis of your mock interview videos. Um, and basically tell you where, where where you've done well with your answers and where you can improve so that by the time you go to these real mock these real video interviews you're ready for them you've got the feedback you can go and do well in those okay other bonuses we got in here is monthly courses which are going to be released in the coaching program um, you also get unlimited one-to-one -one messaging with me which means any questions you can just drop me a message rather than like <laughs> leaving a youtube comment and then i like don't reply to it for like three months it's like you can message me Anytime you want, there's a dedicated app for it. You can just send me a CV, cover letter anytime you want, and I'll give you feedback on that. And then also on top of that, you also get two coaching calls with me per month as part of the package. So it means you can do mock interviews, we can do calls, but just anything. If you need a call um, to do something specific, we can just jump on that call right there in that coaching program. Okay, so it is a paid program, but if you are interested in getting those benefits there and helping getting my one-to-one -one support with your degree of pension applications, you can go click the link in the description to just find a bit more about it and see if it's the program for you. But apart from that, hope you've enjoyed this video, hope you got value for it, and I will see you in a bit. Peace out, take care, bye-bye-bye.